Hey everybody, so something that just came up in a lesson today with a student um, was practicing slowly, working on melodic minor, and um, you know I, I felt that the uh, it was better to play slower and more correctly, learn really good fingering, you know, as you move up the neck, and also to get a good sound, you know, and all these things that can be a bit overwhelming when you're learning new information, right? So if we're doing G melodic minor, right, the first thing is to get good fingering. So if we go G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F sharp, G. Now, if I have to think about the notes, what I'm playing, say them, it's going to slow me down immediately. There's no way to play it too fast, so that's good. Play it in reverse. G, F sharp, E, D, C, B flat, A, G. Now play the arpeggio that goes with that mode or scale. So if we want to do the seventh arpeggio, root, third, fifth, and seventh, we get this. G, B flat, D, F sharp, a minor major seven arpeggio. Let's do that descending. F sharp, D, B flat, G. See what I mean? So now, automatically, you're slowing down, and thinking about the information, and your coordination is good now. We're also thinking between the note we're playing and what we're actually doing on the bass. So that's really good. Automatically, everything's slower. We're trying to play with one finger per fret, generally. Nice technique, like minimal movement, shifting intelligently across the neck when we move up. So let's say I want to play this now on one string, just on the E string, right? G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F sharp, G. G, F sharp, E, D, C, B flat, A, G. So you got time to do that. Play long notes. D, C, B flat, A, G. Alternate fingers with the plucking hand as well. So you're doing something for the plucking hand too. You're, you're thinking about efficiently using, if you play with two fingers, like back and forth like that, you see? the same thing on one string up and down now okay notice when I finish that if I take my hand away from the instrument my thumb position as well as I'm shifting up the neck or across upwards that way I'm not letting the thumb move around or I'm over the edge of the fingerboard like that, all right? It's rare that I'll do that unless I'm trying to mute something or I'm just like rocking out on one note for an hour, you know? But otherwise, I'm usually keeping the thumb in the back of the neck and especially when you're playing a one finger per fret type line or idea, okay? So when you're playing this melodic minor, we might do a little pivot here between the fourth and the fifth, the C and the D, watch this. That pivot, fourth finger on the D, back to the E on the second fret with the first. That's deliberate so I can shift back one fret to the next string. Same in reverse when I come back down. Other than that, it's all one finger per fret staying in position, you see, okay? So this slow, considered way of practice it's really good, especially if it's something new. And for something like the melodic minor, which for a lot of new students, it, it's this is kind of a little overwhelming sometimes. People are used to the major scale, for example, or pentatonic scales. But melodic minor can, can be kind of somewhat intimidating. So practicing it slowly, really getting the notes down. So then when you start playing the modes off that parent melodic minor, it's not so difficult because you've already learned the notes in the parent scale, and you're really solid on that. So if you can see that network of notes, that DNA that you've got to work with, then it makes it much easier to acclimatize to learning all the modes from that parent scale. So if this is new, try that approach. Really slow, considered practice. Think of the note names. Really think about what note you're playing, not just a fingering pattern, although that helps us play efficiently. 
but also the note names themselves. So you're really aware of what you're playing. So if I see a G minor major seven, I think, ah, you know, melodic minor is a good choice over that. And I know the notes in that chord, in that arpeggio. I know I'm very likely to have a B flat, the minor third, the fifth might be missing, but the major seven is gonna to need to be in there. So I have the sound of the minor major seven. I could even play it on the bass as a three note chord with just a root, the major seven, and I'm putting the third on top because it's a little clearer voicing like that. So I know that sound, and I also know the notes contained within the chord, and I also, I know the scale I can use to play a line derived from that little fit over that sound, over that chord.